Today I want to talk about ambiguity. It gives me the heebie-jeebies just even saying the word ambiguous. Isn't that scary? You don't know? Could be anything. Could be a lot of different things. Whew. Just even saying the word creeps me out. Life is ambiguous. We don't know what's happening and we interpret it. And everyone interprets it differently. It isn't one thing. People will make believe that it's one thing sometimes and that there are right ways of doing things or perceiving things, which isn't true. But it makes us feel oh so comfortable to believe in something calms me right down just to try and believe in something. Ah, <sighs> much better. So that's the opium of the masses. Um, well, in this case, this person here, me, I, myself, am not so religious. And without that, I don't have a belief system. And I'm trying my best to just go with the flow or swim like Nemo and just figure out where I am and what's happening around me, trying not to get eaten alive. Exhilarating times, right? So is it a friend? Is it a foe? I don't know. And it's always both, usually both. Um, and I guess that in some ways, the fun of life is to be able to not take it too seriously and not fixate on one particular interpretation of things. And, some, and it can change very quickly from moment to moment or from day to day in that case. Um, and things can cycle back around and we can learn. And the problem is, is though, my voice just really went up there, the problem. Is there a problem? Mic check, one, two. Uh, let's just chill out on that sentence then. <laughs> I just keep thinking, why is my eye droopy today? That's interesting, but, or is it always that way? Anyway. Yeah, you gotta watch out for, if I start a sentence with the problem is, you probably should just tune out at that point. Let me finish what I'm saying and then maybe tune back in after I'm done making up some BS. Um, so sitting in the ambiguity, right? So what I do know is that not so long ago, I didn't have any energy, but I wanted to do things. Couldn't do the things because I didn't have any energy. Now, today, I have a little bit of energy, but I don't know what to do. When we find ourselves in that kind of situation, well, there's always the option of trial by error or just brute force. And that is great when you're 20 years old and have abundant, reckless energy. When you're 40 years old, it's a little bit less advisable. And discernment is needed. And patience and timing and finesse are needed. So I'm sitting in a place of, okay, I've got a little bit of energy. Don't know what to do with it. Well, could I just be with that? That can get uncomfortable, but familiarize myself with it, with the shape of it, with the texture of it, without actually having to make a move. <sighs> it's like a getting to know you. We do this in all kinds of different forms in relationships or when we're building or creating something new out of a new material and we don't know what it is and we have to kind of feel it out. That's normal, but it's pretty easy to get a little over excited and over eager and throw ourselves into things without really having a clue what we're working with. Good thing that life gives us many chances. <laughs> so I'm in a place like that right in the last week or so. 
where things are very kind of ambiguous. And I, I don't even know what the different things are. It's not like I have some ideas of all these different options of things that I'm choosing between or, no, it's just all vague and it's all ambiguous. Now, all I can think to do is just try to feel into it, which actually requires slowing down, which depending on how you're wired, that might be difficult. Like if you feel as though you have a little bit of energy, the natural inclination is to lean into that. Sometimes though, if you have a little bit of energy, actually you want to pull back and just let that be there. Wow, that's a thought. Getting to know yourself in a way that you're not used to, perhaps. Like, okay, so this is me. This energy that's coming up, this is me. I don't have to act on it every single time. I don't have to, you know, just run to the first thing that comes up, whether it's a hobby or an interest or a person or an addictive behavior or a television show or an exercise program or whatever. Like, you could just say, okay, well, here's a little bit of energy. Let's just sit with it and see what it feels like. And yeah, I don't know where that's supposed to go. I don't, there's no point to that. I'm not saying there's, I'm not telling you there's any, um, any gold treasure in that. It's just what I'm doing right now, trying to do right now. So paradoxically, taking myself and saying, hey, why don't you go take a little nap right now in the middle of the afternoon? while you're feeling energized and seeing what it feels like. It's kind of like when you were a child and you had to take a nap and you didn't want to take a nap. It's that same principle. And in that sense, I am still a child. So it makes sense. Um, it's when we talk about these kinds of things, for me anyways, it's really easy to go into shame and to embarrassment because I'm talking about things that I should have figured out by now. I should have mastered by now. I'm comparing myself with some idealized, more adult version, more mature version of myself. And um, that's, that doesn't do to do that. So yeah, just being with it, you know, just being with it, whatever it is. Well, I could just see that this talk is going absolutely nowhere. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? It's going absolutely freaking nowhere. Just great. <laughs> the emperor has no clothes. It's so funny. <laughs> yep. Ugh. Oh. And it's so now the bird, right? And I talked about the bird in the previous video, listening to the sound of the bird. When you're in a state of this, like a little bit of restfulness with a little bit of energy, it's uh, that's a level of intimacy that, first of all, sucks because it requires you to basically just drop yourself and get rid of your, get out of your own way to inhabit that experience of hearing, which is a can be a joyful, can be a blissful experience, can be a very connected experience. It's intimate though, which if you're anything like me and like a lot of people are like, hey, oh, that's like too close for comfort, you know? The bird in me, where it's like, it's right here. <laughs> you know, and that, that um, I can't say because I'm not a professional, but that may be a normal common experience for a lot of people. It also may be what we might call the result of a traumatized development or traumatized childhood or upbringing. Um, and at the same time, we live in a society that is traumatized. We live in a society that is disconnected. And so it is normal. It's not healthy necessarily in the long run, but it's normal. So I'm hearing these birds and it's feeling like a very rich experience that I'm not necessarily willing to just step into in this moment. So I'm talking instead. Because why should I be happy just by hearing? 
Why should that create joy? Why should that create such uh, abundance? I'm not, it's not like I'm in a particularly well-rested, well-fed, good mood today that the sound of birds outside should be this amazing, joyous rapture. Um, conversely, you know, if you're not well slept, that might sound like hell on earth if you hear birds in like five or six o'clock in the morning. But right now, it's like, wow. What is that? It's very real. It's very real. The senses, very real. <laughs> how, how, how stupid on a scale of one to a hundred do I sound? <laughs> Don't answer that. It's the dumbest things. Like it's the simplest, stupidest things. Like. Oh, a bird is chirping. Oh my God, it's amazing. Like, it's like, yeah, it is freaking amazing at the same time. Um, and that is not an experience that is always available. And sometimes we're in pain and sometimes we're all over the place. And what can you say? Um, I probably spent the last six months on this channel talking about pain and suffering and all this miserable stuff that I've been into. And that's still there. It's just a little bit quieter today. I've been receiving maybe a lot of care from people and help and support that has made it a little bit easier to deal with. So, okay, I can listen to some things and be a little bit happy for a minute. Okay. Doesn't take away all that bad stuff. And I prefer the idea of being able to hold all of those things together. I don't prefer the idea of moving beyond okay well we're having bad experiences we're going to move beyond those have some good experiences and forget about all that bad stuff it's in the past let those other people deal with it now you know whoever has to deal with it they can but we're not going to i don't believe in that i believe in just a more collective approach to suffering and um, collective responsibility and a shared burden and things like that um, so But, and, I probably spend a lot more time in what you would call negative states than positive ones. So, it's okay to indulge a little bit in something so mundane as just listening to nature and feeling good about that. I think that's fine and fair and good. We could all use a little bit more of that. Is that a sweeping generalization? You betcha. <laughs> this video, <laughs> this video, I'll tell you. I'm going to go eat some lunch, so I wish you a good etc. Okay, bye.